So we made a mistake here, and it should have been r squared over here. Okay? Otherwise, we are good. So please give me just 10, 15 minutes of your life for me to explain this equation and why it is important and how it will be useful here. Okay? Uh, your, if you haven't seen this before, your whole life should change, should have been changed. This is not a joke, this is true, you can prove this. And somehow, when you have, when you have e to the squared, it's just scaling, e times e, okay? e cubed is e times e times e. But somehow, if you have e to the i times theta, an angle, it corresponds to rotation in complex plane. So, let's say you take, you take a number in complex plane. Uh, let's say over here, this is your number, z equals a plus i times b. This is a, this is b. Did you follow so far? Yes? So if you want to find z, uh, let's say y is equal to z times e to the i theta, you just go around theta, and that's your y. It just rotates, takes something and rotates. Why it is super important? Because... Uh, all oscillations are disguised rotations, okay? Let's say something rotates, something rotates, and you, you, let's say, shine some light on it, and you watch its shadow. For some reason, its shadow is, no, let me go with dark. So here it is, its shadow, right? When it rotates over here, what does its shadow do? Goes back and forth, back and forth, right? It, so rotation over here is harmonic oscillation down here. Did you follow all this? Yes? So, you can represent this theta, and you can just look at the x component of it, and you will get the harmonic oscillator, okay? This still works. Like, you remember e to the alpha t derivative was alpha times e to the alpha t. Do you remember this? Yes? Derivative of e to the kx is k times e to the kx. What is derivative, double derivative of e to the alpha t? Alpha squared. Alpha squared e to the alpha t. So far so good? Now let's remember our equation. L d squared q over dt squared plus, what was the next one? R d q over dt plus L q, no, 1 over c times q. Do you remember this? Equals 0. Did you follow all this? No problem? I'm going to assume, I'm going to assume that some sort of coefficient, let's say a times e to the alpha t is the solution of, I'm going to propose a solution, propose a solution in this form, OK? 
Okay? Are you following? Yes? So, and I'm going to plug it in here. Why can I propose this solution? Because, uh, because of the following. Look, look what happens. What is dq over dt? Alpha a times e to the alpha t. Do you, do you agree? Yes. What is d squared q over dt? Alpha squared a e to the alpha t. Yes? Let's put these back in the equation. You just have alpha squared L plus alpha times R plus 1 over C times <coughs> A times E to the alpha T equals 0. So far, so good? So if my proposed solution were to work, then this must be zero. Right? So your second order differential equation turns into second order algebraic equation. What is the solution of this equation? Minus r plus minus, plus minus square root r squared minus four times alpha squared no l l four times yes. l uh, a b like four times a b over two l. So what do you get? Alpha is minus r over two l. Okay, and then you have plus minus, but I'm going to change things here. Um, no, let me not change it. Okay, this is what you get, right? Okay, I, I am going to change it. Uh, let me include L inside. So what do I get? R squared over 4L squared minus 1 over LC. Okay? Did you follow everything so far? Now we don't like that minus 1 over LC. We are used to seeing square root with 1 over LC, right? So let me take that minus outside of the square root. So I get R over 2L plus minus I multiply it with I, and then I have 1 over LC minus R squared over 4L squared. So A is a constant number, right? A. A is a constant number. So we should note that it's non-zero. We should note that it's non-zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we call this is omega prime. Okay, omega prime <coughs> is uh, square root of, okay, omega prime squared. Okay, let me go back. So, do you remember our proposed solution? Our proposed solution was like this, A times E to the alpha T, and that was it, right? Well, let's say my solution to Q of T is just this. Is this enough? We need to find A, and that will define our solution. But that means that there is only one parameter that defines my solution. And this is no good, because I have a second order differential equation. So in reality, we, are, we have a superposition of two solutions. Like I, we have A1, alpha 1 of this, plus A2, E to the alpha 2 of T. And alpha, two, alpha 1 and alpha 2 are these, with plus and minus ones. Okay? 
Now, let, let's focus on this e to the alpha t. We have something like this, e to the, we have this, e to the minus r over 2L plus minus i omega prime t, right? So we have a decaying part, e to the minus r over 2L t will be our decaying envelope. That will be the thing that we are seeing here. This is our decaying envelope. Okay? And we have this e to the e to the plus minus i omega prime t part. This will be the oscillating part. But it will be oscillating only if omega prime is greater than zero. So you want actually to have a complex site on top of it so that it oscillates. If you don't have complex number here, there is no oscillation. There is again decay or growth, right? Omega prime being greater than zero means what was omega prime? 1 over LC minus R squared over 4L squared greater than 0. Omega prime squared. Okay. So you want omega prime not to be complex. If omega prime is complex, then you have pure decay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so far so good. So that gives you the reason why R needs to be less than 4L over C to have oscillation. Okay, what have we learned? Whenever you have oscillations, whenever you have ordinary differential equations, you can solve them with proposing e to the alpha t that will turn your ordinary differential equation into algebraic equation. And you solve the algebraic equation and you get the possible solutions and you learn a lot. Okay? Uh, was this useful? Yes? Okay. So let's then start uh, going back to chapters 25 through 28 and solve some problems, okay? I will go way be to the beginning. So, do you remember the name of chapter 25? Current resistance and EMF. So, here, here's the question. You buy a light bulb, it says 60 watts and 12 volts. If you buy a light bulb that says 60 watts and 12 volts, it means that it will produce 60 watts only if you connect it to 12 volts. It will produce different wattage if you connect it to different source. Do you understand the mm -hmm. point? So the question is, what is the resistance of this light bulb? Exactly. Exactly. P is V squared over R. Do you remember this? P is IV. P is I squared R. All of these are true. And in this particular case, we can use R equals V squared over P. So what do you get? 144 divided by 60. What is the resistance? Whatever it is. Okay? Uh, easy start. May I propose a question on this topic? Yes, propose a question on this topic. I hope it's not hard. Well, it's the first question. Okay, which one? First question. First question, thank you very much. <coughs>
Aman. <laughs> yes. Uh, 2.8 kilo ohm and the 3.7 kilo ohm resistors are connected in parallel. This combination is connected in series with the 1.8 kilo ohm. If each resistor is rated one half watts maximum without overheating, what is the maximum voltage that can be applied across the whole network? Okay, so very nice. You have 2.8 here kilo ohms. You have 3.7. Did you already solve this? Well, it, the numbers are not nice, but I solved it. Thank you very much for proposing this. And we are going to apply a voltage to them. And our aim is not to exceed one half watts. Right? Yes. So let's find the current. So let's say this current is I. Let's find I1, I2, and I3. Uh, OK. That is I already. So all right. Uh, how do we find I1 and I2? Resistors, yes, very good. So I, I would start it like this. You can do it in a million different ways. I would start by finding the equivalent resistance of this one. So that resistance is uh, 3.7 times 2.8 over 3.7 plus 2.8. Okay, this is also kilo ohm. That's Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, uh, 3.7 times 2.8. Yes, numbers are not nice, but s divided by 6.5. 1.6. Let's go with 1.6. So, you have 1.6 kilo ohms there and 1.8 kilo ohms on the other side. And this voltage will be distributed accordingly, right? So how much voltage will be distributed over here? The voltage will be V times 1.8 divided by 1.6 plus 1.8. Mm -hmm. That will be the voltage there. And the voltage on the other side will be on the green side over here, the voltage will be 1.6 times, sorry, V times 1.6 divided by 1.6 plus 1.8. Where do we go from here? So first of all, I, we already know I, right? I is V over 1.6 plus 1.8. That we do know. And this needs to be, uh, okay, we are not done with that one. We will come back to that later. What is I1? It's basically, so we know the voltage across this side, right? So we can divide it by 2.8 and we will get the result. Do you agree or do you not agree? I know that I1 times R1 equals I2 times R2. And yes. I1 plus I2 is equals I. Yes. So I1 is this voltage difference divided by 2.8. Do you not agree with that? I agree with that. Yes. So let me write it down. So for that one, V times uh, 1.6 divided by is it 3.4 mm -hmm. divided by 2.8? OK, I1 is that. I2 is, um, yes, I, I started getting bored with this yeah, long ago. <laughs> no offense, this is no brilliant. Offense. Yes. Mm. 
3.7. So the point here is that next you calculate I squared R, I1 squared R1, and I2 squared R2. And you make sure that all of them are smaller, of them are smaller than one half. Whichever one is closer, you just uh, make sure that you don't uh, get so that one. Yes? Do we need to find individual powers in this case? Because we calculated our equivalence. Mm -hmm. If we calculate our equivalence, isn't the total power I squared times our equivalence? Uh, we are not after total power, we are after individual powers. So none of the resistors should go above one half. Mm -hmm. So that's why we did it individually. The total power could exceed one, sh should exceed one half, because if you are making one of them maximum, the other one would be something, so it will exceed. Actually, I think the smarter way to do this would be to ask the following. Which one would get the maximum power? So do you, can you answer that question uh, very easily? Yes? Yes? Yes, like what you could do is all these answers will, will have some V squared in them, right? V squared times something, V squared times something, V squared times something, right? And you choose the smallest one. That would be your smallest power. Uh, sorry, the largest one. And you make it equal to one half. Okay, but otherwise it's not, at least to me, it's not very, very obvious which one will dissipate the most uh, energy because the numbers are not so nice. Yeah. All right. Well, there are more questions there, but I think they are fine. Hmm? There more questions? Yeah, there are more questions there, but I think they are a bit... Hard? Yes. They are a bit hard. Should we do hard questions? Yeah. Um, I have this question that I like. It's not uh, it's a bit a bit too tricky to ask in the exam, but it will teach you a lot. So let me ask it. Okay? So I simply have a cube of resistance. You see, in this cube, uh, I start from this corner over here, A, and I go all the way to the opposite corner, B. Okay? And it does matter which corner I go. Okay? Do all of them have R? Yes. And then the total is not? No, the total is not R. Uh, from A to B, it was R. Oh, was it? Yes. Let's 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 find it out. I don't think so. What I remember is five over six. Well, that it could be as well. I remember how to All right. So the question is, what is R A B? What is the equivalent resistance between A and B? As you can see, uh, it's not so obvious because. You can say that this resistor is parallel to that resistor right away. But you can say that after thinking a little bit. Okay? So you, you, really, have to need, you really need to think symmet about symmetry. So I start from A and I go to these three points that are really the same points. Do you see those three points? I start from A and I go to three points and they are similar because I go like this, I go like this and I end up on the other edge. So the potentials at those points must be the same. Okay? Also, 
these points, oops, how do I go back? Yes. Also, these points are the same. Okay? So whenever points have the same potential, you can just bring them together, stick them together. Should I repeat that? Whenever two points, three points, multiple points have the same potential, you can just stick them together. It doesn't matter. You can just bring the, those points together and make them one point. And whatever they bring with them, you should bring with them. So in this particular case, I start from A over here, and I go to this purple points and the, all these purple points are now one point but I have reached them from three different resistors so it turns out that those resistors are parallel to each other do you understand this then I go from each one of those purple points go to green point next right but there are six different ways to go. One, two, three, four, five, six. I didn't put R there, so let me put R also there. So I go from b purple points to green points with six different paths. Each one has resistance of R. Okay. Did you follow all this? Then I go to point B and I go to point B using three different routes. Those routes are these ones. This is the one. Also, I didn't put R there. This is the one and this is another one. And this is yet another one that I just erased. <laughs> All right. So I have this point, this point, this point. Now, can you find the equivalent resistance? Should be piece of cake now, right? So you have R over 3 from this, R over 6 from this, R over 3 from this, and you sum them up. What do you get? 5 over 6. 5R over 6. 5 over 6R. Okay? Um, I don't want to linger too much on this, but... Yes, sure. Uh, so, <coughs> why do you want to break it? <laughs> so, you see, these lines are the same, right? And these lines are the same. And the lines in between are the same. So, the lines in between are these ones, these ones these ones, these ones, these ones. Oh, no, not this one, this one. So do I have six of them? Yes, I do have six of them. So it will be a different story if you put A and B on different nodes. It's a different story. Let me just draw it without any resistance on top of it, just this so that we don't spend too much time on drawing. After I said that I spent too much time on drawing, I know. But let's put A, let's put A here. 
Okay. For those who are new, we keep making mistakes because Notability had decided to make an update and we are not used to it. So remember, B earlier on, B was here and that made some cer certain symmetries, right? But now I put B over here, right? So if B is here, what kind of symmetries do I have now? Uh, I mean, for example, these two are the same, right? So you have these two points over here are the same because they are both connected to A. Then also you have these two points the same. Did you follow this? And that's it. And the rest of this short, right? There Hmm? There will be other nodes in the middle. It depends what you mean by node. So let me draw it. So I, 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 I put A here and B is here. So let me actually remove this and plot them with colors. Oh, doing that is really hard. So let me just bring them back. So from A to B, there is this line over here, A to B. That line is this line. Okay. Then it goes to purple points and B goes to green points. It goes with two paths. And this one goes with two paths as well. But then when the blue and green meet together, it creates these two paths. Those two paths are these ones, right? And then there are these two paths over here and these two paths over here, which meet again. Did you follow that mm -hmm. in your mind? Yes? Now we can do uh, the thing that we do, so R, over here, R over 2 from 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 here, and R from here, R over 2 from here. So I have R, R over 2, R over 2, this one is R over 2, and it's parallel to 2R. Do you agree? Then what is 2R and R over 2 when they are in parallel? Two over three. Do you agree? By the way, you make incredible mistakes when you do this. Two over five. Two over five. That's why you should actually do it carefully. So one over two R plus two over R inverse right mm -hmm. so you get 3 over 2 r no 5 over 2 r inverse so you get 2 over 5 r okay finally you have r plus 2 over 5 so you have 7 over 5 r parallel to r did i make a mistake there so I summed R, R, and 2 over 5 from here. So R over 2 plus R over 2 is 1. 1 plus 2 over 5 is 7 over 5. Finally, I have 5 over 7R plus 1 over R. 7 over 12? 7 over 12R. So that's the solution, okay? The purpose of this exercise was for you to get this understanding of bringing same potentials together.
Okay, quiz time.